one of those days outside. I can tell it's gonna get cold. There's a ton of wind <laughs> and the rain just started. Uh, it is gray. Woof, getting wet. Anyway, hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Just heading into the greenhouse today. I was watering, but I'm gonna stop for a minute. So, today I have some more blooms to show you. What have we got in bloom today? Well, quick hint, it's bandas. They're in bloom right now again. Uh, my my Vanda Costylus Colmari and my Vanda Lamellata Varboxali Remediose. Remediose? Yeah. Anywho, but so many other things are in spike. If you check your collection right now, as winter is upon us, you might be seeing a bunch of spikes coming because that's what's going on in mine. I I mean, it's really exciting. Look at that. These two new spikes on top of the one that was there. That's new for me. And um, oh, I see two new spikes here on my grocery store non-fragrant phalaenopsis. Super exciting. Oh, can I remove this leaf yet? Nope. So I'm just going to leave it there. I'm leaving these guys down here. That's the Hoyas. They're not doing anything. Speaking of Hoyas, here's my Hoya. Who are you? Is this Sunrise? Yeah. I think it's Sunrise. Let's double check before I lie. <laughs> Eek. It is. Why is this not Sunrise? I'm sure this is Sunrise. <laughs> yeah, it's Sunrise. Why is Sunrise? I'm not sure why mine doesn't have that much of a fragrance. It's supposed to. The blooms are very similar to La Cunosa, but bigger. And the fragrance is supposed to be nice, but yeah, mine's doing nothing. Kind of smells like a very weak grapefruit scent right now. But the plant itself is quite beautiful. Look at that. Anywho, moving on over to these guys. Um, my Hoyas aren't doing anything right now, but the fowls are all spiking, so I'm excited about that. Hoyas, nothing. This grocery store fowl, which is strongly fragrant, is still doing her thing. And I noticed yesterday she put out a new spike. So it's going to be real pretty real soon. Um, here is my other one. Phalaenopsis Young Home Golden Pixie. In frame, please. Yeah, it just put out a spike. This guy has been in bloom for a while. Um, <clears throat> is view? This is not Via Via Catface. I do Fal Joy Fairy Tale. Beautiful fragrance on this one. Musky and sweet. And it's putting out a new flower right there. Yee. Oh, now this guy, it's a fragrant pink bloomer. Um, I just saw the two spikes here. It's hard to tell because the roots are all over the place. Look at that. They're literally pointing all up. Like, why? Uh, and this other one here, which is a silver leaf. N was this a no ID? Yeah, there was a no ID. But not only did it put out a spike, it put out a cakey. So I'm like, all right, thank you. You are doing things and exceeding expectations every day. Anywho, on to the others here. My um, Vanda Varicorn Cross Marillii. I had gotten one a year ago and it was so weak that it just decided to perish. So I had to get another one. I really miss that one's blooms. You know, someone had asked about the more miniature Vandas, about how I deal with them. So here we have this one, which is our relatively new acquisition. Here it has a dry root, which I'm going to cut off because I don't think that is taking up nutrients as it should. So I'm going to cut that off. I did just immediately plop it into the pot once it came. That tends to encourage them to root very quickly and they don't go through any stress after the shipment process. Especially if they're coming from somewhere warm like Florida and coming up here to me in zone six, which is like purgatory for these plants. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
it did not go through any stress at all so i'm happy about that <clears throat> here we have miss um uh what are you again oh yeah memoria holland tan which for some odd reason when it put out these middle roots it knocked off some of its leaves right in the middle of the plant which is Ooh, kind of annoying. Makes it look unattractive, but, you know, whatever. It blooms, and it has, seriously, many babies. So, I assume it is happy. Now, this guy is continuing to perfume my entire greenhouse. This is a complex cross, a whole co glossum, a uh, Mijianum cross. Uh, what were you again? Yes. New Finetia, Pocata Cross, Holco Glossum, Armigianum. I totally remembered. Why was I doubting myself? So, yeah. Guys, listen. For fragrance, man, if you want something that is perfuming a good 10 feet away from your property, this would be the one for you, okay? This is it. It is just powdery and fresh and absolutely amazing. Ooh, I spotted a spike on my Denisoniana Cross, um... Neofinetia falcata, I can see it on top of the spike that it recently dried. Bah humbug. But you know, let's be thankful for small things. You know, my husband actually lost his um the big green what was that thing again? The Japanese praying mantis. Chinese uh Canadian? Yes, it was a Canadian praying mantis. It was in here. And I don't know where it has gone at all. I'm hoping it's not dead because this is the time of year when they do indeed perish and die. But, you know, c'est la vie. If it is dead, I hope to find it. But I'm assuming it will have gone into a pot somewhere. Now, guys, from Nat's Orchids, here is the Vanda Ocean Storm. And it has spikes. Ocean Storm, it's called Ray's Starstruck, actually, which is the cross of Vanda Ocean Storm cross Merillii. I have a lot of Merillii crosses because I like the fragrance from my Vanda Varicorn cross Merillii. This one, however, is not very strong at all. But as you can see, her buds are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We will have nine flowers on this girl when she decides to bloom. So, moving on to the Vandas. Ooh, here's another spike on my um, yellow bird Brassavola. There it is. And this guy, guys. Remember earlier in the year when my Vanda Komari decided to bloom? And I was like, oh my gosh, this thing never blooms in summer. What do you know? Look at this. It is in bloom again. Now, the fragrance on this is competing with the Hoka Glossum Armigianum, they are equally as strong. I forgot how strong this Armigianum is. But look at the splendor of this dark purple flowers. I will never get tired of seeing or smelling this guy. It is, it is, oh, how many did I get this time? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And one, two, three, four, five to open on the tip. Yeah, floriferous. Very fragrant and an easy grower when potted. I've heard news of this guy not producing a lot of roots. And it is definitely not the truth. It will produce roots when it is, its environment is very moist, which this Rinko Stylish Gigantia cross actually appreciates. So it is one that will absolutely appreciate potting. If you find your Gigantia crosses especially not blooming and not behaving for you and drying out, then by all means, get some big media and pot it. I mean, what do you stand to lose if it's already not doing its best, yeah? Here we have the Lamellata Var Remediose. Remediose. Boxali. Var Boxali. It has bloomed. Glorious spray of flowers. I still have some unopened. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine. 
9 unopened and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 flowers opened already. Absolutely gorgeous. And the fragrance on this one is mild. Let me double check because it usually is mild. Let's stare at this while I smell. <laughs> yeah, it, it's actually mild, but it is very fresh, very powdery and sweet. It is more gentle fragrance for those of you that like the knock me out and push me on my feet fragrance. This is this one is not it. This one is gentle and very baby scented like uh, you would imagine baby powder mixed with a delicate musk. That's how this one smells. I really adore it actually. So yeah, ooh, I have to soak this guy. Now, sometimes even when they're potted, they do get dry if you are like me and you neglect. So you can see the roots here. I actually, some are popping out, growing, but the leaves have gotten slightly wrinkled at the top, which means I will have to drop this one in the pot and soak it, which is a brilliant idea when they start to wrinkle. See, because you want your leaves on your bandos to have no wrinkles at all. Okay, so make sure you're soaking them occasionally, at least once every two weeks, if they start to wrinkle and look like, look like that. You don't want that to happen, yeah? All right, so for the Vandas, those were the ones in Spike that decided to surprise me, and I really appreciate their oncoming winter surprise. Now, there's other guys that have decided to Spike. Where? Where is this thing? I need to find this 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 creature because I don't see it at all. Anyway, I'm looking at the bandas to see if I see any more. So the to the person who asked how the ones that are miniature bandas are potted, they're potted the same way as the big ones. The only ones I believe can take tighter potting, smaller media is the Rinko Stylus Gigantia. I still wouldn't do it though. I would give them as big a media as possible. I mean, I actually have like, <laughs> this is mulch, cedar wood mulch, and it's a giant piece in there. But underneath it is just the coconut core basket liner ripped up. So even though it looks like there's a lot in the pot, it's really not. I might also add some lava rock on the top because those tend to retain some water. And I don't like when my top is dry because when the top is dry, the roots tend to want to go away from the pot because they're obviously sensing that the, the pot is dry. So when, when you have these little ones on the top, it definitely encourages them to stay moist. Do you see the green root tips here at the end of what season? Fall? Yeah, they're still green just about everywhere, even down in the pot and not wrinkled. Mini Shoshana, me, has decided not to water them for almost a week and a half now, which is horrible. But I tell you guys, when I tell you my time runs away from me with my children, this is what happens and they do get neglected, which is exactly why mine are potted. Because life, you know? It be life and guys. So yeah. Um, other guys are... Each yeah, you don't have any spikes on you, so I'm just going to ignore you and not look at you too long. Over here in the corner, this this one, my batram, is... Is this a batram? No, it looks skinny. It must be some kind of... What were you? What were you? Uh, I don't want to upset this person and move it, but... It is a Mimi Palmer. That's why it's skinny, yeah? Cross Tessalata. It has not bloomed for me as yet. It is relatively small. But yeah, it's potted. It loves its pot. I hope it starts to love it to the point of blooming. That would be nice. You heard? Mm. Anyway, so that was the check on the Vandas that are in Spike at this time in the greenhouse, guys. I hope in your collection you have some exciting stuff going on as well. Because, I don't know about you, I really love the spikes on the flowers at this time of year. When everything is just, you know, dry and dreary and ugly. <laughs> so, I, I, I definitely 
appreciate this time of year when we can look forward to flowers. Because really, that's what it's all about for me, the flowers and the fragrance. If you guys like this content and content such as this, please consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you to my newest subscribers for doing the same. If you do not like this content, please mash that dislike button so I can know what you guys do or do not like. Look at the rain. Isn't it nice? Also, if anyone could benefit from the information in this video, consider sharing it with a friend because, you know, they might like it too. Anyway, guys, hope you're having a great Wednesday afternoon, midweek. The week is almost done. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Goodbye.